try not to bore you too much. Um, this is just a. Um, so first, oh, the click doesn't work. Okay. Um, a quick note about me. Uh, my name's Alison. Uh, most people may know me online as Allegria. Um, mostly known as Ali throughout to various people. Um, I'm a tech writer, and that's not to be confused with an IT journalist, because I often get asked if I'm a journalist. Um, I'm a Red Hat noob, meaning that I've been there roughly four months now, so enough to, to, to be able to mostly do things by myself, but I still need my buddies around, and they're both in the room at the moment. Wade, Lana, and Brian. <laughs> um, and I wrote this book about being a noob at Red Hat specifically, but I've tailored the talk to be about starting a new job in general. Um, mainly because everyone has to do an exercise when they start to learn the tools and how to create books and everything. And I thought the exercise was a little boring, so I thought I would write about what I knew really well at the time, and that was being brand new. So, everyone's a noob when they start a new job. And sometimes even when they've been there for a little while. Um, and I thought this was particularly amusing because that's pretty much where you start. Um, the place to start, I guess, in any sort of new job is when you're being introduced to people, this is the time to tell people what name you prefer to be called and how to pronounce your name. Um, I'm really blessed in that I have a really simple name to say, um, but I'm also, for years, I was really careful to only ever introduce myself as Alison professionally and then that just sort of all went to hell with social media. Um, but if, you, if people don't know how to say your name, based on what they've seen on the screen, or they don't know what you prefer to be called, there's a good chance they just won't use it, and they'll refer to you as hey you, and this could go for years. Um, also, it might be a useful time to say if you don't like a particular nickname, and just try to potentially stop your workmates from calling it. <laughs> um, at Red Hat, we've got a you know pretty casual dress policy, but to, to save yourself looking like a bit of a tool when you first show up to work, find out what the um, dress code is for your particular workplace. Um, often, you can spot the noobs because they're wearing suits that they would have worn and been completely acceptable at every other workplace. And not being, and been a little self-conscious when our HR dude is showing you around wearing shorts and a Hawaiian t-shirt. What we, um, is also useful to have in any workplace, hopefully, is they will assign you someone that knows more than you and that can show you around and introduce you to some people. Um, they call them buddies at uh, Red um, And what these guys do is not only, um, I guess, stop you from feeling like an absolute tool when you don't know anybody, but help you get your system set up. Some of you might be lucky and you'll get a system that's already pre-configured with all your applications and everything you ever need to know, and you just need to put in your username and password when you finally get it. We have to set up our system from scratch. And if you've never used Linux before, and some of the noobs that I started with hadn't, it's really, really daunting. Consequently, you will break things. <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> you have to be able to make mistakes and go, you know what, I tried this and I screwed it up, and can you please help me fix it? Ideally, um, they won't laugh at you too much but depends on how badly you do it. <laughs> Something that we, um, we do, which is really unique from every other place I've been at, is we mostly communicate using text. A lot of workplaces prefer, um, you know, and are happy for people to get up and walk around and talk to each other, but our offices are eerily quiet because we're all talking furiously on IRT. <laughs> um, <coughs> consequently, we actually have meetings in IRC, which is awesome when you have to be in two meetings at once. <laughs> so, how your workplace communicates um, and how you as a person communicate, if these two are not in alignment, you are in for some really interesting times. Another thing that tends to happen oh, is management structures. If you're going from being micromanaged and having someone watch your every move and monitoring when you take a lunch break and, you know, are you more than five minutes late to the office, say you're sitting at your desk by this particular time, you may be annoyed by having no one care if you show up <laughs> at 8 o'clock or at 9.30, provided you get your deliverables done. Chances are you won't have a manager sneak up behind you and bust you on Facebook and make a big deal about it. Um, hell, Facebook's even unlocked at our work. So it's mainly 
the way that they've approached it is by giving people more power, you'll actually deliver more because you're trusted to do what you need to do. As well, we get amazing options like working from home once you've achieved you know, a particular length of time or a qualification. This may be worth asking about because some people prefer to work at home. Um, not always an office doesn't work for everybody. Um, I know that at our workplace we need a particular qualification that says that you know, we know how to use a Linux system well enough to work it by ourselves and if we break something we can fix it. Um, stuff that is fun to Red Hat is um, pretty much an unlimited supply of coffee <laughs> and coke and kitchen goodies which unfortunately the work from homies don't get so much. Sorry, love. <laughs> I still reckon they should send me a care package once a month. Oh, oh yeah. I'm so for that. I think everyone should petition Red Hat and let them know that their poor remote workers are not getting the, the, the decent we service that they get. So so <laughs> Take it up the union. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. So, working out, I guess, what's provided at work and what you need to bring in can save you from lugging a lot of things back and forth. And also finding out whether there are any traditions in your workplace where everyone goes out for lunch on payday or um, they have particular morning teas or cake days I know quite popular amongst the office. Um, another thing that <laughs> workplaces tend to sometimes get right and sometimes not is balancing the amount of time that you work and the amount of time that you don't work at work. Um, by being able to take breaks when you need them, um, and you're usually the best person to pick that as opposed to at a designated time, if you're feeling stressed out about something, you can go and play Mario Kart. Um, go take a walk, go have a cigarette. Um, because if you're running late behind something, there's a good chance that you're probably going to expect yourself to stay back at the office and finish that so that you finish on time. So that's basically where we're at. Um, something that I found and I very helpfully pointed out to our Brisbane GM um, was that in our logo is a dinosaur. <laughs> and how many people have actually seen the dinosaur in the logo? <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> You're going to found it? Logo for, yeah. I'm going to remember the logo show. <laughs> doing a shape and there was a hand on the wall. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> that was my question slide. <laughs> uh, it probably won't work anyway. Uh, no. No, it's not there. That's okay. And then I had an attribution slide at the end. It's all over. Um, <laughs> Coincidentally, um, as I was preparing my talk and telling my workmates about how I'm you know, going to present the new book or bits of it that I could, um, I was then told that we're actually hiring, so if any of that sounds appealing to you, <laughs> um, I have some flies up here that describe the various things that happen at Red Hat in Brisbane. Um, and if you're interested or you know someone else who might be, then feel free to come and grab one. Any questions? Yes? When does Red Hat get an office in Canberra? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Do you mind if I answer? No, no, not at all. <laughs> There are about five employees in Canberra. Um, there's me, I'm a for writer, just like Alison. And there is a couple of sales guys. I mean, we did have a train up and left. Um, there's a few, few bits and pieces. And one particular guy has wanted a Canberra office for a very long time and has petitioned to have a Canberra office for a very long time. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. He still believes it will. I, um, <laughs> I think we probably, there, there is actually an official minimum number that you're supposed to have, which depending on which rumour you listen to, is anywhere in between 5 and 10. Um, I don't think we're going to... If, uh, if we start hiring madly in Canberra and we end up with 10 people, there's a chance we'll probably end up in an office. As it is, I don't think it's likely. So the, the answer is probably, no, there won't be a Canberra office in the one soon. <laughs> cool. Yes, that's very exciting. <laughs> I don't know.